Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Alcott channel. We're going to be talking about, yeah, Project Big Picture. We'll talk about the name of it as well. Before I get into that, you will remember, Scouted Football, we did a little competition. I was going to offer up, how many of these have we got? Four. I got sent four from uh, from Joe, from Scouted Football. And uh, you guys, all you had to do is say, uh, I'll have one, Jim and subscribe to the channel. If you've won one, your name is on the screen right now. What a knob, I just did that. <laughs> get rid of it, bringing it back, get rid of it. Giving myself more editing work. So there it is, if you've won, um, message me on Twitter and we'll figure it out and I'll send it to you. And life's great because you've got some free stuff. Um, another reason to subscribe because, you know, I gave you some free stuff. Let's get into the video. So, Project Big Picture. It's something that's been uh, discussed kind of behind our backs and behind everyone's backs, it seems, um, for the, the last three years, according to Rick Parry. He's been chatting with Man United and Liverpool. They've been looking to get this done, and there are a lot of different elements to the deal. The top line of it, if you're one of the owners of Liverpool and Man United, is the idea that you are saving the EFL, saving the football pyramid, and it's a bigger picture for people to understand that uh, that the football pyramid is going to be absolutely fine. Obviously, there is self-interest in all of these things. That's how negotiations work. And and also, just to say, actually, uh, me and Flav, if you want to hear Flav's thoughts on all of this, uh, we spoke about this on our Patreon uh, yesterday. Let's look at the key points. The key points are, apparently, that... The Premier League would be reduced from 20 to 18 clubs. The EFL Cup and the Community Shield would be scrapped. Current one club, one vote principle would be abolished, as would the rule that 14 clubs out of the current 20 need to agree on a policy. Two very important points in this whole negotiation, I would say. Power would be in the nine clubs that have remained in the Premier League the longest, uh, you know, based on the starting of the Premier League, which, of course, is when football began. Only six of the nine longest serving clubs need to vote for major change. Uh, a £250 million pay out, payment up front to the EFL plus a £100 million payment to the Football Association and 25% of Premier League annual revenue up from 4% would go to the EFL clubs in the long term. I've seen a lot of videos, a lot of people talking about it, people saying, just say no. If you look at this and you listen to a lot of different people, and I've tried to listen to the different perspectives of different people uh, on different podcasts and different bits and pieces, I think that is actually the kind of the crux of if this is a good idea or not. That specific uh, iteration of it, which apparently is the 18th draft of this proposal, if you feel like that is a good proposal or not, that's one question. But I think the idea that everyone is talking about this is actually quite a positive thing because what it's doing, it's highlighting... The, the problems that we're facing as a football pyramid, the problems that we're facing as football moves forward and changes. And we also shouldn't be scared of change, especially at the moment, because with the pandemic, with everything that's moving on, we, we kind of need to be flexible. Um, and with the amount of money that's in football um, and how that naturally kind of goes to the top, uh, instead of uh, the you know it being equally shared out. That's something that happens throughout society. And there's a reason why the Conservatives, you know, often uh, get in power is because it does serve for a lot of people and also people are serving themselves and that's what this deal naturally will do because any negotiation first of all you're, you're going to have two sides and they're going to have to put something forward that both means that they concede but also means that they get some form of power you would have thought at the same time the people that are going to then uh, say yes or no to a deal like this the perspectives of those people, that's the thing that I keep coming back to. The perspectives of these different people, be it a QPR fan in the championship, be it a the owner of Rochdale, who's very much for this, the owner of some other EFL clubs who see this as uh, a step forward, the owner of um, a League One club in Peterborough. I was listening to something that he was talking about. And then teams that are in the Premier League right now, but not part of the top six. And then, of course, the top six as well. And I think even top six fans, can see that it it, w it will wash away an element of their um, their achievement if they always have the the sort of lion's share of the power. Now the lion's share of the power is kind of with those top clubs already. I think we all know that we've all known that for a long time. But I think the 
problem is is that the idea that this will be really ingrained in the system that's what's really riling people up the fact that it's so baked in if this happens the fact that let's have a look at it that um the current one club one vote principle would be abolished as would the rule that 14 clubs of the current 20 need to uh, agree on a pa- uh, policy this idea of a bit of a bit of a mandate um which you know initially with the premier league kind of forming there was an element of that in itself where you you know before it was the whole football league and then it became 20 um, and with that 20 there's one vote per one club so then it needed to be a sort of a majority out of that with this new idea coming from Liverpool Man United and essentially the top six is that the, the Premier League and this really winds me up and I think will wind up a lot of football fans is that the teams that have been in the Premier League the longest which is just you know Aston Villa not in that I mean, I, I'm amazed that it's got to be pretty close between Aston Villa in, in terms of the amount of years that they've been out of the Premier League as opposed to being in it. They were one of the top guys when the Premier League started in 1992. Um, they will have this sort of lion's share of, of, of power uh, and that will continue forevermore. And I think that's the, that's the thing with this. But like I say, with every negotiation, there's going to be two sides to it. So, And you've seen the perspective of EFL clubs because... It put yourself in these three different positions. You're a Premier League club, you're a business owner, and it is a business, and you want to dominate. You want to dominate the amount of money that you can bring in. You want to dominate the ability to to uh, go out there and utilise your strength and influence. That's, I think, another thing that uh, Liverpool and Man United want the ability to use some of their fixtures um, in terms of broadcasting rights to get in as much money as possible. Again, you could understand that, like, look, this is my influence. Let me do that. So I can understand that perspective it from the business owners of those top guys that want to stay at the top. My rebuttal to that would be generally that you're at the top anyway, and that's not really going to change too much. You might have the odd season here and there where you dip, but overall there is still going to be that 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 dominance. It doesn't need to be as baked in. But what they have seen over years not just through this pandemic but i think you know it is the perfect time to 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 put this out there um because you've got clubs look down the other end of it efl clubs that are weeks away and i mean it weeks away five or six weeks away um from from being on the cliff edge of not having a football club anymore so those business owners those owners and also, if you look at a League One or League Two club, often there is the general understanding that it is just about survival at this stage. They're not looking at the top six as a place that they could ever be. Then let's move up a little bit up the football pyramid. You then look at maybe some owners from League One. Dara McAntony, he spoke very well about the idea of that. Actually, when he looks a little bit further up, he likes the idea of a wage cap where he is in League One because he believes it then becomes about recruitment. Um, recruitment for for Peterborough to to get their best squad based on a formula that is provided to them in the understanding of what their wage cap is, which is part of this as well. And then that allows them to move up into the championship and then maybe get to their ceiling, which is the bottom of the Premier League. We'll get into the wage cap in a second. You then look at owners of teams in the championship. And I think then when your perspective is, it's the closer you get to this top six, the more you're probably uh, adverse to it. Because what it does is it, it stretches the top six further and further away from the rest of the football pyramid. Although it will squish up the rest. That top six, again, will just sail off into the distance. So for that reason, I'm not for this project. But... If you, again, if you look at the, at the different things that are being put forward there, some of them are really great. You know, 250 a million, 25% uh, of the Premier League's annual revenue, that would help safeguard a lot of those clubs down the bottom. But the problem is, is in terms of the kind of what, what feels right with sport is that there is that sort of competitive equality. In terms of long-term idea of football, if you take that deal, the idea that it's a project big picture... Um, I'm not sure it is. This comes down to altruism. The perfect scenario for most people who don't own any businesses in this is that there is an altruistic step forward from these top clubs to understand that we want a thriving sport and you never know, we could be Southampton who dropped down into League One, Wolves, League One, Sunderland, obviously in there at the moment. Man City have been down there. Queen's Park Rangers have been down there. Leeds fans, for example, would be fuming with something like this. A club that consider themselves a, a big club. And I'm doing that because I generally don't like the idea of this big club 
thing. They would be looking like, look, we've finally just got ourselves into a position where we're starting to kind of make our way back to dare to dream. And there's no reason why Leeds can't become a Leicester City. And there's no reason why Leicester City at the moment can't become a Spurs. And there's no reason why a Spurs can't become a Man United or, you know, or a Liverpool. Because at the moment, there's still an ability for that to occur. We can still see that as something that can happen. But you've got to be very, very savvy, both in a business sense um, and on the pitch as well in terms of the recruitment. But the further you stretch to the other way, the, the, bigger, the bigger the problems are. And what you're going to see is you might actually see that the chasm between the League One Championship and the bottom of the Premier League might squish up a bit. You know, there's an idea that the parachute payments go away uh, and then they kind of utilize some of that money to to go back into, um, you know, passing the money through through the, the different league. But again, that's that's kind of cutting into the money that the Premier League have got to give anyway. The chasm remains. The other thing to remember, because I think when there's any kind of change, it's very easy for people to go, no, and scream at it. But if you look at it, you know, the devil is in the detail of all of these things. But also there's, there's other elements, subsidized Premier League away travel, Away sections of at least 3,000, 8% of uh, capacity, £20 cap on away tickets. These are all things that would actually delight a lot of football fans. But it comes back to that sticking point of power. And, and in sport, that's always going to be a problem for people. Uh, and, and that's where I come back to with this. I think it's good that there's a conversation happening. I think it's not good that it's been done behind the back of, of, the, of the Premier League. Um, you know, there might be an opportunity there where you go, look, we're going to do the, have this conversation. We want to put this forward. It's so easy for a lot of football fans to kind of go, well, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. Macclesfield are not all right. Clubs need help and they need it really, really quickly. So with that in mind, there is an opportunity. Um, but it does feel like a power grab, which is what a lot of people have said. Um, it is... <laughs> Although it's been going on for three years, this moment feels opportunistic. But that said, you know, this has only just been brought out by, I think, Sam Wallace from The Telegraph. You've now got a situation where we're talking about it. We're understanding the, the cliff face that a lot of EFL clubs are facing um, because it's about survival for a lot of these clubs. And the bottom line for me is that this negotiation won't work. Um, but will there be enough pressure to to get these top clubs to, to do something or will they allow allow clubs to, to go out of business? Because you know there is a need for a loan and that loan needs to be used to, to safeguard Championship, EFL, uh, League One and League Two clubs and probably drip down into the non-league as well. I'm sure they're, they're struggling even more. It really is a microcosm of society where you know the, the rich have got a lot <laughs> and the rest don't. Uh, and so, for them to be that altruistic, generally you're going to want something back. So as, you know, as in terms of governance, um, in terms of us as, as football fans and sports fans, what is the kind of negotiation that we would allow? It's too easy to go up, oh, well, that just give us the money. There's going to have to be some form of concession. There is a sort of, there is a brand pl power play from this if you do want to do it the other way, because the big six is the big six. It's not changing. I don't think it's changing. Um, so that can be done, but I don't see it being done. I think I'd be naive to suggest that we'll just give them the money and let that be it. A lot of talk has come around that uh, Dara McAnthony was saying that, look, there, there's a loan that can be done and the money can be found because the Premier League is such a strong brand. That's, you know, that's again something that needs to be considered, but it needs to be discussed with the Premier League and not behind their back, in my opinion. Um, so I understand why the Premier League are disappointed by all of this. So let me know in the comments below if you had to concede something. And also let me know you, you, who you support, because I think that's the big thing with this. The perception of this is determined on on the needs of you. It's like, you know, it's like a, a vote in an election. Often you kind of see what's right in front of your face. What do you re need right now? And you go out and grab it. So I don't blame League Two clubs for wanting all of that. For, but from my perspective, a little bit higher up, I can almost kind of see both sides to it, but I want to still dream of of QPR winning the Premier League as much as that would make a lot of fans laugh. <laughs> but I, you kind of need that hope in sport for it to thrive. Uh, and so for me, this deal is not a deal that I would want to take. But if I want to get a deal over the line to safeguard QPR as much as any other club, there has to be some form of concession. So what is that concession? I don't have the answer. I honestly don't have the answer. I would like to hear an alternative. So let me know in the comments below if you can think of one. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on uh, Project Big Picture. 
please don't call it that um because it's not the big picture you're actually the big picture it's beyond ironic to call it that in my opinion um because it's not actually for the betterment of everyone it's the for the betterment long term of a few um sorry about the ramble and <laughs> it was probably chaos um but you know look i've been talking about a lot of different things recently on this channel and i didn't want to shy away from this one as well so um those are my thoughts on it i think it's it's murky it's complicated um and money is involved power is involved and that's a problem um but it's 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 real life so it can't be avoided so there has to be some thought and negotiation so how do you get that done let me know in the comments below See you next time. Subscribe if you enjoyed this. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this. And I'll see you soon.